Hey, welcome to Craft Central Designs. My name is Dwyn. Today's projects, this shell napkin holder and seahorse wall decor. Please refer to my last week's video for detailed tutorials on how I transformed two galvanized shells and a wood cut out seahorse with Mod Podge and a napkin. This tutorial, we are completing those decor pieces that we began in the previous video. This is the second video in my series featuring coastal decor made primarily from Dollar Tree items. Welcome back to my current subscribers and welcome as well to everyone. Please consider subscribing if you like what you see in my content. Hit the like button and leave your comments. I love receiving them and I love sharing my crafting passion with you all. Okay, let's get busy putting these projects together. Okay, here we have a sign from Dollar Tree. And this is the sea horse that we uh, applied the um, beautiful napkin from Home Goods with Mod Podge. We're going to take off that burlap uh, hanger. And this sign has a bit of a gray tinge to it. And I want it to be a nice. Uh, white. So I'm going to paint it with Snow White Waverly chalk paint all over the front and in all the little curves and grooves of that shell. Okay, and here we have it all painted and looking beautiful. Okay, now we are going to apply this seahorse to this sign, but I want the seahorse to be elevated off the sign. So I'm going to accomplish that by applying wood half rounds, which you can purchase on Amazon, to the back of the seahorse, and then I will apply it to that sign. decided for that shell cut out that I wanted to apply another piece of that napkin that you see on the seahorse to that little palette I created with craft sticks. I used four craft sticks and that's what I'm going to apply um, this napkin too. Be sure you take off the top layer. You don't want to use both layers of the napkin, just the top layer. And I'm going to give you some other choices for what you could do with that shell cut out of the top of the sign. You can actually apply a shell over it. I use only natural shells in all my coastal decor, but I also live in Florida, so it's a little bit easier. They have um, sand dollars and starfish at Dollar Tree, but you can also order shells on Amazon. So for this little palette, as I call refer to it, I'm going to place uh, this piece of napkin and I'm going to apply it to the back of the sign so that you can see that napkin print of that napkin through that shell cutout. I painted that little palette white with Snow White Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to apply some Mod Podge to that palette and from there I am going to just lay my section of napkin over that. Now originally I thought I might use my Cricut mini press and uh, apply it the way that I did for the uh, seahorse but I don't think it's necessary. It's a very small area and I can accomplish it just fine by just using the damp Mod Podge, applying the napkin to it very lightly 
pressing down with my fingers, and then I just trim off the excess. Okay, so I purchased this cotton twine, which I absolutely love. I used this a lot with my coastal decor last year, and Dollar Tree hasn't had it for quite some time. And I found it again, and I purchased four rolls because I just love it. It's a nice, soft uh, twine. And I love using this with my uh, coastal decor because I love the... Um, the soft kind of ivory creamy color of it reminds me of sand. So I'm just doing uh, a little practice uh, application there to see if I might want to wrap some twine around the bottom of that sign just to give it some more visual interest. All right, so we are going to apply those wood half rounds to the back of the seahorse. And I'm going to apply the rounded ends of those wood half rounds to the back of the seahorse. And then I'm going to apply glue to the flat side of those wood rounds or wood half rounds. And that's what I'll apply to the sign. I just used my hot glue gun apply some glue to the rounded side of those wood half rounds and I place it here and there on the seahorse. You want to create a good balance uh, when you place the seahorse on the sign so it's not wobbling around. And my glue gun is acting crazy. <laughs> I don't know what was going on with that. Now, if you like, you can paint those wood rounds if you're concerned that you'll see them. Uh, my sign is going in my RV and I'm certain that it's going to be just fine the way it is, but you do you if you want yours painted, those little half wood rounds. Now I'm going to apply some glue to my little palette that I created to place behind the sign. So you'll see that napkin peeking through that shell opening. I think that's going to be so pretty. And I cut those crafting sticks just the right size so that would, it would sit nicely behind the sign. Very pretty. I decided we need one more wood half round there just to have a good uh, balance for that seahorse sitting on that sign. So I applied my hot glue and I'm going to turn it over, make sure it's nice and straight on the sign, press it down. And I love the way the nose of that seahorse is extending a little bit beyond the um, edge of that sign. And I love the um, dimension and the depth created by just using those wood half rounds. I love that look. Now I'm gonna create a hanger for the sign. Now you could have kept the jute cord. I just preferred not to use the uh, jute cord, but um, you could use it. You could also use it to create um, that little decor touch on the bottom of the sign. Um, that's you do you, whatever you prefer. And I just uh, put a little painter's tape on the ends of the uh, twine so that I could feed it through that little hole. And then I tied a little knot at the end on each side. Eventually, I'm going to glue that little knot down. 
I didn't want to use beads or uh, any other kind of decoration on the hanger. I thought that um, the piece had enough visual interest that I didn't need to do that. I'll go back and trim off those ends in a bit. Looking so pretty so far. And now we're gonna go ahead and place that little uh, wrapping of that cotton cord around the bottom. Not too much, just a little touch of visual interest there. So I secure the uh, beginning of that cord with a little bit of hot glue. And I'm just going to wrap it around and crisscross it a few times. And I think that's it. That's all it needs. And then I'm going to secure that as well on the back of the sign. After I cut the... Uh, the cotton cord. Just use my hot glue to secure that. This is a nice touch for this piece. You'll see I'm going to apply a little something in the middle of that area where it crisscrosses the cord in the front. And I think that looks pretty and it coordinates with the hanger. Little extra dab there just to secure that, that cord there. Looking pretty. Okay, now I'm gonna show you some options. Again, I use um natural shells but Dollar Tree has some options and they also have um, real shells and back in the uh, we're in this section with all of the uh, um, floral moss and the glass vases and the wreath frames and you can use a starfish you can use a a shell that's shaped like the shell cutout at the top. I ended up deciding on a small sand dollar, which I absolutely love sand dollars, and it's a natural. And I'm just gonna apply a little bit of hot glue on there and apply that right in the center. And that's looking so pretty. Now we're going to take care of that hanger. I'm going to apply a little dab of glue underneath the knot because I want to kind of secure that there. And then I'm going to trim off that end. And then I'm gonna place the tiny little dab of glue right on top of the knot and press that, any little extra fraying edge there right into the knot. So all you'll see there is just a little knot on each side with no end, end tails. gives it a little bit more of a neater appearance. Again, you can use jute twine if you like, and then you could use it as well on the bottom, crisscross it on the bottom, place a shell. You do you, it's up to you. So I add a little dab of glue, press down that little fraying from the cord so it becomes like a little part of the knot. And again, I'm showing you 
that shell, but I, I think it really gets lost on that piece, the, the white on the white. I think that the, uh, the napkin peeking through there really is, was the best choice from my perspective anyway. So I also added these little tiny starfish. They're natural starfish. They're very delicate and very beautiful. And I'm just gonna place a few around uh, the seahorse. And I'm gonna have them just peeking outside of the uh, perimeter or the edge of the seahorse. A Little bit of hot glue to secure them on there just for a little extra visual interest. And I think this looks very pretty. Home Goods has um, a selection of beautiful napkins, um, numerous ones in the uh, nautical beach um, theme. So you might want to check that out if you're at Home Goods. Beautiful. Now I ended up placing another um, little starfish, actually two, one on each side of that little sand dollar at the bottom. You'll see in the end. All right, here we have our shells. I painted the inside with Snow White Waverly chalk paint. Two coats for each shell. And you saw me prepare those shells in the previous video. That video title is Shore Living Coastal DIYs on my channel. Now, what we're going to do is apply two coats of Mod Podge on both sides of the shell. And my reason for this is I'm thinking a napkin holder would be on a kitchen counter or on a dinner table, and it could potentially get something splashed on it. So I'm thinking it should be a surface that can be wiped off. So therefore I am covering both sides of each shell with two coats of Mod Podge. Now I'm also going to have to create a base for this napkin holder. And I'm using six of these blocks. I ended up not using the little blocks. I thought about making feet for the napkin holder and then I decided no. I'm gonna use this Gorilla Super Glue and I'm going to attach three of those blocks together, two sets. And then I'm going to attach each of the sets together to create six in all, the base for this napkin holder. And that Gorilla, uh, that Gorilla uh, glue holds very well and bonds pretty quickly. So I wait for those to dry and you can see it's all one cohesive piece now. I'm going to apply Waverly Snow White chalk paint to the front, the sides, and the bottom. We are going to be taking those shells and attaching them to that base that I am painting right now. And this is the way we are going to get um, those shells to stand up. And here we have it. So you see I have two heavy candles there. Those are going to prop up each side of the shell. I'm going to use E6000 because that's actually the Mac Daddy of glue. And of course it's going to have to sit and dry, but I feel certain that this is the glue that is really necessary to hold this piece. So I'm going to take my E6000 and put a generous portion 
on all of the edges that are actually going to touch that white base. I'm going to stand the shell up and press it against the base. And then I'm going to take the candle and use that to hold that shell up. Now you want that shell very straight up and down, very vertical. So really look at it from the side. You don't want it leaning in or certainly not leaning out. You want this to look like a, an actual napkin holder. So the same for the other side. Now this initial E6000 glue application is to create the structure or the stability of the structure initially. So I place my candle there to support the other side. And what I mean by that is after that E6000 glue has dried, what you just saw me put on the shell, you can go in later on the inside. There's a lot of little grooves um, on the inside of that shell that you can apply some glue down inside of those grooves between the shell and that base, and that will just create extra stability. But I would wait until this is all completely dry. I left it for hours before I even touched it. I just made absolutely certain, as you can see there, that that's standing perfectly. And here it is. And I put some napkins in, and I also applied a starfish. Again, that's your choice. You can leave it just as is, or you can apply a sand dollar, or uh, another shell, and I have those beautiful napkins in there, which I also got at Home Goods. And this is uh, on my counter in my RV. And you can see behind there my coastal spoons that I painted. If anybody's interested, let me know, and maybe we could do some coastal spoons. They love. Love, love wooden spoons with um, painting. And then we also have this sign, which is now also in my RV. And you can see bottom to top, it's very pretty. Nice coastal colors, very pretty. Okay. If you like what you see on my channel, please subscribe and hit the like button. Please leave your comments below. Let me know what you think of these projects. So until next time, you take care.